I'm really glad that more and more vets are at least open to the idea of our cats eating a fresh homemade diet and you know that they don't really need to eat or should even eat processed dry cereal every meal every single day for their entire life right they're starting to see that more pet parents also want to feed a homemade fresh food diet so they're more open to the idea because of course we want to work together because we both care about the longevity of our cats most of the time, the objections to homemade raw specifically are bacteria contamination risk, but another objection is nutritional imbalances. Both are very warranted because there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. But today we're going to focus more on the nutritional imbalances because most people will say, make sure if you're using a recipe, it is vet approved. And that phrase vet approved is really interesting because on AFCO's website, it says, can I put veterinarian approved on my labels? And it says no. So AFCO is the association for of animal feed control officials. They make the rules for pet food manufacturers to follow when they create and label their products. Very interesting that pet food companies are not allowed to say veterinarian approved. It says that they are not, veterinarians do not approve labels or products. Only state regulatory agencies can do that. However, you can state veterinarian recommended, formulated, or developed if it meets specific criteria. So it's interesting that people say use vet approved recipes when even pet food companies can't say that. But we're going to look at a few different vet approved recipes that are online. They're available online for free. And we're going to take a look at nutritional analysis of them using formulation software. Spoiler alert, it isn't great. <laughs> hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. And the, the first recipe we're going to look at is called, this is an article, vet approved homemade cat food recipes. The first one is classic chicken and rice feast. This is a tried and true favorite, apparently provides a balanced combination of lean protein and carbohydrates, which are not necessary for cats, making it suitable for cats of all ages and dietary requirements. So the ingredients, we have one boneless chicken breast. So right there, I have an issue because that is not an exact weight. We need to know ounces or grams. A boneless chicken breast that, I mean, really depends because you can get a boneless chicken breast at the farmer's market and then you can buy a boneless chicken breast from the grocery store and the one at the grocery store probably looks like it's jacked up on steroids, whereas the farmer's market chicken boneless breast is much smaller. So right there, that's a red flag. You want to see specific uh, weight measurements, you know, whether it's ounces or grams. And for the rest of the ingredients, they, they are specific. So one boneless chicken breast, I looked up the average, apparently it's six ounces, so that's what I used in the recipe. So chicken breast, light meat cooked, because it does say yeah, that you're going to cook it. Cook the chicken breast thoroughly and shred it into bite-sized pieces. Oh, the other thing here actually I just realized is that it doesn't say whether or not it's skinless. It just says boneless. And the skin is going to provide some fat, so that's important to know as well. Does it include the skin? Does it not include the skin? So just with the first ingredient, technically, I mean, chicken broth is okay, but technically <laughs> the only suitable ingredient for cats and they're not very specific about the type of ingredient to use. So we have one boneless chicken breast, quarter of a cup cooked rice, it says white or brown, quarter of a cup chicken broth, low sodium, quarter of a cup carrots cooked and mashed, and quarter of a cup peas cooked and mashed. So basically you cook the ingredients and then you combine them. So right here we have chicken breast, light meat cooked. I put no skin because it doesn't say. Typically if you buy boneless breasts at the store, they are skinless. Six ounces because that's what Google said the average is. I did brown rice cooked, no salt added. And this ADF typicals, I'm using animal diet formulator. The ADF typicals is basically an average because depending on where you get your ingredients, there's a lot of nutritional range. So they developed averages. So quarter of a cup is two ounces, carrots cooked, boiled, drained without salt, two ounces, chicken broth, two ounces, and cooked peas, two ounces. Okay, so the protein is 16.83% with including the moisture, and the fat is only 3.66. Now that is extremely low. Again, that's just because I'm assuming they mean chick uh, skinless chicken breast, but we don't know for sure. 
Now, when we look at the minerals, first of all, there's little, there's barely any calcium in this recipe. There are, there's going to be some calcium in the ingredients that we use, but mainly we either use bones or eggshell powder or bone meal powder for the calcium source. So you're going to see that the calcium is really low, calcium to phosphorus ratio is low. We're low on chloride, we're low on iron, we're low on copper, we're low on zinc, we're low on iodine. For vitamins, we're low on vitamin D, E, B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, folic acid, choline. Typically choline, there's not a lot of data on that. And with vitamin K, that's not necessary unless it's a fish heavy diet. So I'm not concerned about vitamin K, but look, I mean, basically every single vitamin and a lot of the minerals are, are really, really lacking. So EPA and DHA, and then look at all these amino acids. Taurine is low because we're just using breast meat. Typically with taurine, you wanna use hardworking muscle meat, so chicken thigh would be better. There's no heart in this recipe. There's no liver in this recipe. All of these amino acids are below the minimum. And I'm using NRC standard for an adult indoor cat, and this is at water since we're using fresh food with with processed food, you use modified at water, and for fresh food, you use at water. So this free recipe online that is apparently vet approved is severely lacking in lots of minerals, vitamins, and essential amino acids. The next vet approved recipe, this is just on a website that has a blog post that approved recipes. That's the other thing is I would just be mindful of who's writing the article. This one, for example, it does actually say medically reviewed by, this is a DVM. So I, I don't know, but I would say a good guideline is to make sure that the ingredients are specific in the weight and the actual ingredient, like the previous recipe we looked at. Is it, bone, is it skinless or is, do we include the skin? And the other thing is they need to provide a nutritional analysis. Okay, so this, recipe is raw chicken and salmon so we've got chicken wings bone in skin on so that's good that's what you want to see is like specific you're going to use the bone you're going to keep the skin raw salmon with bone raw chicken heart raw beef kidney raw chicken liver one whole egg raw with shell one teaspoon taurine supplement and two cups water and this one is served raw so it, it just says put everything through the grinder and then you're going to mix everything together and I noticed that on other recipes in the notes section, it does say this is not a complete and balanced meal. This is just a single, single serving, like this one here, single serve. It says this food is not intended to be the basis for a complete diet. This one does not have those specific notes, so we don't know for sure. So we'll take a look at this recipe again, chicken wings with meat, skin, and bone. And I put the exact amount from this recipe raw salmon, raw chicken heart, raw egg, whole, and it says 50 grams is about one large egg, so that's what I put, raw beef kidney and raw chicken liver. Protein, we have 17.85%, fat 9.76, so that's good, you know, it's, it's about half, which is, which is excellent. So let's take a look at the minerals. Calcium to phosphorus ratio is good. We're low on potassium. We're low on iron, we're low on copper, we're low on manganese, we're low on zinc, and we're low on iodine. For vitamins, we're low on vitamin D, which is interesting because we have salmon in there, but it could just be the, it could just be the software that, let's see, yeah, there's zero vitamin D. So maybe if I had chosen canned, or canned salmon, then that would be fine. So we'll just ignore the vitamin D for now. But even when we ignore the vitamin D, we're still low on vitamin E, vitamin B1. As I mentioned, choline, you know, sometimes the ingredients aren't really, uh, sometimes the analysis isn't considered for choline, like the USDA analysis, and vitamin K we don't have to worry about. Arachidonic acid, I'm not worried about. So this one's slightly better, but we're still missing a lot of important minerals. Potassium, iron, copper, manganese, zinc, and iodine. They're all below the minimum recommendations that NRC has. Now, this is not to scare you away from using homemade cat food recipes. I would just be very mindful of free recipes online that do not provide a nutritional analysis because you wanna make sure that 
regardless of what type of food you're feeding, that it's appropriate for your cat. Now, I do formulate recipes that are complete to NRC guidelines. They're not proved by anyone, but honestly, I don't really care about that. They are appropriate for cats, and I provide a nutritional analysis for them. So you can check the link in the description below for all of the recipes. If you buy my homemade cat food starter kit, it includes all of the recipes, raw meaty bones, raw bone lists, and I do plan to add some cooked recipes. So you can check that link in the description below. It includes everything that you need to get started on homemade cat food properly. The next vet approved recipe, again, comes from an article that's online vet called vet approved recipes. You see, this is something that a lot of people search for. So website creators, content creators will use that phrase vet approved recipes because people, they know that people are searching for them. So yeah, again, I would be wary about these free recipes online. Unless you can contact them and say, can you please provide a nutritional analysis of the recipe? I wanna make sure that it is actually complete for my cat's life stage. And if they don't respond or if they, don't, if they can't send one to you, I would avoid it. Okay, so this one is chicken and pumpkin. So we've got one and a half pounds bone-in skinless chicken thighs, half a pound organ, heart and liver. So again, this, they're kind of specific, but is it equal parts heart and liver? Is it 75% heart, 25% liver? You know, this, this is kind of uncertain right here. Two eggs, five teaspoons fish oil, one teaspoon non-iodized salt, one vitamin E capsule. I don't like this either, one vitamin E capsule, because with vitamin E, capsules could be a bunch of different international units, and you want to know how many IU you need. So one capsule for humans, for example, could be way higher than what cats actually need, and it's a full capsule it's not a dropper, so how much of that capsule do we need? It says one vitamin E capsule, but it doesn't say how many IU that vitamin E capsule should have. Then we have one teaspoon liquid vitamin E B complex, 1,000 milligrams taurine, three tablespoons pumpkin puree. So with the vitamin B, the thing is with vitamin with B vitamins, they are water soluble. So if there is excess, it will get flushed out in the cat's urine and it isn't dangerous. But with vitamin E, that is a fat-soluble vitamin. So excess will get stored in the body and that can cause problems. So that's why it's important to know, well, how many international units of vitamin E do I need for this specific recipe? What capsule are you using? Because on the picture, on the infographic, there's, there's no brand. It just has a capsule that says E on it. And there's no further clarification in the instructions. So for this recipe, it does say to remove the bones and the skin, cut it into pieces, and then everything is cooked. So what I did here is cooked chicken thigh meat only, and then chicken liver and then chicken heart. I did equal parts because it doesn't say, it just says half a pound of both. So it, it, is it half a pound total for both or is it half a pound each? Really, it, it doesn't say. So we're just gonna go with quarter of a pound for both to equal half a pound. One whole egg cooked and then canned pumpkin just because that's what, you know, pumpkin puree, that's what it was. Sea salt because there wasn't any non-iodized salt so I just put that. And then for vitamin B complex, I just used this one, this brand, and then for the vitamin E soft gel, this was one of the only ones that I could find that was a soft gel, so that's what I used. So for protein, we have 22.27%, fat is 9.74%. This is good, you're gonna notice that the protein is a little higher just because the moisture is a little lower since it is cooked. But then we take a look at the minerals. So again, we don't have much calcium, so we're gonna have a really low calcium to phosphorus ratio, which is not good. It's supposed to be one to one and we're at 0.08 to one, basically no calcium in this recipe. Potassium is low, iron is low, copper is low, manganese is low, zinc is low, and iodine is low. You might be noticing a pattern here because a lot of these use chicken, whereas with iron and copper, you're gonna see that, well, iron more with spleen, beef spleen, pork spleen. Copper, you're gonna see more with beef liver or ruminant animals. Manganese, really the only source of manganese is either green tripe or blue mussel sometimes a little bit oyster, or you're going to need a supplement. And so far we haven't seen any that have said use a manganese supplement. Zinc, same thing, that's pretty much red meat. Chicken heart, some, a little bit, but you know, if it's cooked, it's a little different. 
For iodine, they're probably relying on the salt, but a lot of the times, unless it is iodized, which means they add iodine to it, but this specifically says non-iodized. So I don't know if they were thinking that it would still contain iodine, but typically with, if we wanna to aim to use all whole fresh foods, we would use kelp. That's what I use. I know some people are concerned, but I mean, we have to supply iodine somehow. For vitamins, vitamin D, uh, there's no there's no sardines or salmon in this recipe. That's what I like to use for vitamin D. Small amount just to fulfill those requirements. Vitamin B1 is low. Choline and vitamin K I'm not concerned about because again, vitamin K is not necessary unless you're feeding a fish heavy diet. Choline is typically, is most of the time is gonna say it's low just because of USDA data. Uh, the amino acids were good, you know, taurine is a little low, but it does actually say to include taurine. I just didn't because I knew that obviously if you're using a taurine supplement, then taurine is gonna be fine. So again, we have another vet approved recipe that is deficient. So it's very interesting that a lot of people say, make sure it's vet approved, make sure it's vet approved. But then when you go online and search for vet approved recipes, these articles that I pulled from are within the top couple results. So if you're using these recipes that are vet approved, thinking, oh, these are complete and balanced as is, I don't need to add anything to it. You know, they're gonna be incomplete. They are not balanced recipes. To be fair, some of these articles do say, speak with your veterinarian before changing your cat's diet. There is a disclaimer there. But at the same time, you know, if you're thinking, well, all I need to do is make sure it's vet approved, that's not going to be the best option for your cat when you're using a free recipe online. Obviously, if you're working with a veterinary nutritionist, that's different because they're actually formulating the diet for your specific cat and they're probably providing a nutritional analysis, but these free recipes online do not. So I would steer clear of these. And again, if you do want to feed homemade cat food, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I would say be wary of these free recipes online. Check out my homemade cat food starter kit in the description below. It is my video course that shows you from start to finish how to do homemade food at home, including complete recipes. And I do provide a nutritional analysis based on NRC guidelines for adult cats raw meaty bones, raw boneless, and I'm going to add some cooked recipes as well. Thanks so much for watching.